Fundamental to the development of my project was researching Cosmorama by Design Earth. There is a very clear narrative with waste, recycling and exploitation being overarching themes. It initially looks at the distribution of extraterrestrial mining. The vision of the city being part of the scene is a glimpse into the context I am looking to associate my long-term research with. The depiction of dividing extraterrestrial mining was pertinent to me as a byproduct of this human crisis solving theory that was the machinery and architectural sort of spatial waste aspects. It is a common association with the Design Earth team that the theme of ground recycling or waste solution projects are realised in their speculative drawings. Despite the hazardous suggestion of extraterrestrial mining, the Design Earth team used this as an opportunity to utilise a graveyard of material in Point Nemo, which created the people's final refuge, a concept which is dramatised in this speculative project. However, the message of the need to address man-made waste and to use it to develop urban projects is a powerful one in my opinion. However, to be critical of the Cosmorama project, it is a utopian view on a megastructure which in itself would contradict its proactive environmental intentions. The need for electricity from mainland America or Asia is depicted alongside the architectural waste implied with the need to create a refuge for people unearthed from their habitats. Taking into consideration the Cosmorama project, I feel it needs to be stripped back and looked from the perspective of a floating city, which can then be the inspiration for me to project my intentions for the project onto. The post-war and crude design for Cosmorama isn't reflected in the drawings made by them. The utopian view Cosmorama has on megastructures is juxtaposed by the design itself. I've manipulated the design to reflect its industrial legacy by increasing the structural weight of the model. The Cosmorama project disrupts the biosphere of the ocean anyways because of waste and electrical requirements. An interest of mine is the production of plastic waste and my initial concept is to have a vessel whose location is ambiguous to collect waste which is found in our oceans. This waste is often discarded from cities inland, however due to natural processes and human errors in waste procedures, waste claims territory. With the floating island in mind, the most pertinent precedent research I scrutinised were useful testing grounds to develop my floating island. Looking initially at historical examples, I implemented my ideas with Plato's Atlantis and moved on to the Grim City, which then heightened my interest in stacking and more condensed urban floating landscapes which triggered research in megastructures, most notably in the metabolism architectural movement, this was the marine city. However, I felt this vessel should not be fixed to the ground and thus taking me to Super Studios conveyor belt city. The penultimate and significant case study I looked at developed linking the Super Studio case study with a project based around Arctic colonies. Finally, my research concluded with the growing city. The growing city is the culmination of my floating island research at this point due to the fact that the concept is always being added to. The project is a utopian view on how we can use material from the ocean floor to construct an ever-growing city, never complete and ever changing. I have related this to my recycling research by using plastic waste and material to construct a space. However, I am not satisfied with this floating island, I feel it is still too literal, even though I like the growing element through the material accumulation and aggregation. The model I am more drawn to as a base point to move forward is my penultimate floating island, the temporality, flexibility and ambiguity of the floating city which regenerates and discards buildings. However, I dislike the waste fact, there needs to be a location which the waste elements accumulate at. This element is something which I need to address as I move forward with the project. As I research into Piranesi and urban waste such as UPVC windows and roof tiles that sort of have interested me throughout my research, the project removed itself from the oceans and became a floating concept, its temporality and ambiguity being the driving force of its flexibility. The optimal way to present this for me was to confirm the notion of an ambiguous site context and uh, was to place this section of my research on an island floating in a void. The creation of UPVC windows and tiles has been uh, an integral part of my research and therefore I had a condensed look at the creation from cradle to grave or from cradle to consumer of the tiles and the windows. The idea of an architectural dump site to create waste monuments so that people could experience this public space meant the project developed into more than just a recycling project. There could be an impact on community, cityscapes and urban programs with the implementation of an architectural trash site. 
The trash site can exist anywhere. Its location is currently ambiguous and does not have a list of needs. It can be used as an archive of architectural waste through the years and be a project which is developing and being changed to the needs of the rural, the urban or nautical scape. Whichever it resides in, the intention is for a modern monument to be created that demonstrates or highlights the importance of trash when it's used considering modern material techniques. After reviewing my body of research from the t past term and considering my extensive interest in the subject of flexibility and temporality and utilising man-made waste to develop urban typologies, it is clear to me that the pursuit of creating a surreal environment which demonstrates the concept of an urban dump site whose position within an array of typologies is ambiguous currently. The project currently has a clear objective of being more of a conceptual intervention rather than a technical analysis on what can be done with the use of building materials, plastic and other man-made waste. The floating island aspect of this project has developed into the fact that this can be placed anywhere, cityscape, rural landscape or in the ocean and still be effective in its purpose. It is important to note the romanticisation of this project currently. The idea that humans would enjoy interacting with waste and building with it is one which seems contradictory to current social opinion. Therefore, it is important to note the possibility of creating this trash paradise or trash site through the window of machinery. The project is developing into something which can be placed in a specific environment and looked at as potentially an archive of the city or even integrate different types of waste into its portfolio of trash types. It could be seen as a project which is never completed, constantly changing based on the needs of the city, clients or even change in site within the city. This gives an opportunity to develop the temporality, flexible and construction methods of this architectural dump site as I am looking to create a private space with this waste. The variation of space is still to be decided, however it comes or it stems from Design Earth which kickstarted my research and the industrial utopian megastructure opened up avenues of research which took me through Plato's Atlantis to the Marine City to cities which weren't as successful in the context of my interests within waste such as the Triton City. I wanted to take my research from the speculative to the technical with sites such as the Seoul Floating Islands and Ocean X City by Big. The project which looked to connect these large megascapes to environmental agendas, which is where inspiration from CJ Lim's drawings and in inhabiting infrastructures became pertinent in the project. It allowed me to analyse the cradle to grave process of UPVC windows and roof tiles from their factory production through their city and rural life cycle to the dump site and projects from the Rota Brothers who looked at a lot of recycling architectural elements and how you can reuse them and themselves constructing architectural landfills in the urban environment. Creating an architectural cycle looking at cradle to cradle rather than considering the dump site as a grave for this architectural and man-made waste. The cultural conundrum, if you will, I am aiming to address and provoke a discourse in is our production of waste and create an architectural modern monument concentrating on materiality, tactility, flexibility and temporality.